This will be the final episode of Voyage Beyond Earth. A series where we went from looking at the past, recognizing the present, and imagining a future. Today we conclude that journey on Voyage Beyond Earth, talking about humanity on another planet, a planet far, far away from Earth. All this and more on Voyage Beyond Earth. Okay, so we've traveled 340 years and the biggest problem on the other side is how we slow down. Traveling at 30% the speed of light would require us to slow down from a really long time using more than 45% of the total fuel that we bought for the mission just for the slowing maneuver. Once that's done, we'll begin orbit around our home planet and send out VBE Sat-1. We'll have to bring a lot of new technologies to this planet and one of them will definitely have to be a satellite. This satellite will take a non-geostationary orbit and map out the entire planet for our astronauts. To make the simulated experience as real as possible, I will be using the data for this planet from one of Kepler's several exoplanet discoveries. A methane analysis and a carbon life form observation seems to show that life does not exist on this planet and the mission commander is looking at several potential locations to land. The planet is about 9 times bigger than Earth and has an average temperature of minus 50 degrees Celsius. At this size, the core is still liquid and you have a magnetosphere. Mission leader picks a large spot on the equator which will have temperatures ranging from minus 30 to 25 degrees Celsius. The atmosphere is 56% carbon dioxide, 28% nitrogen and 15% oxygen. Resolve, regolith and environmental science and oxygen and lunar volatile extraction tested in 2018 now called Resolve, will be used on the surface to heat up hydrogen and oxygen present on the surface and create drinking water from that. Also using MOXIE, tested in 2020, the Mars Oxygen in Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, now called OXY, will now be used to convert carbon dioxide into breathable oxygen. The spacecraft detaches from the orbiter that will continue to take pictures and send them back to Earth and the spacecraft descends through the tough atmosphere and lands vertically on a frozen beach. For the next year, the team will live on the lander and send out Oxy and Resolve to do their autonomous tasks. The team will also begin setting up equipment to measure exoplanet quakes, send out automated drones for further away salt samples and pictures, set up solar panels and a nuclear generator for more power and start the construction of a base. The first base will be the construction of six domes. One central dome, surrounded by five others, including ones that will be recreational zones, recycling zones, and two greenhouse zones on the opposite sides of each other, just in case there were any complications. In the second year, the base expands, including isolated greenhouse camps per se, scattered throughout a five kilometer radius, connected solely through underground tunnels with airlocks. As the base expands, so does the population, we grow and grow and grow until we deem the planet to be successfully terraformed, able to sustain humans without a mask. A Von Neumann Oxy machine, I've explained both the terms in previous episodes, so watch if you don't know what they mean, will be set throughout the planet and that'll help increasing the oxygen in the atmosphere. Also, several other methods that I'd explained in the previous episodes can also be used to help terraform the planet. Once that's done, humans will be looking for another adventure, an adventure beyond VBE 414. Back to reality now. Imagine if that happened, waking up every morning and thinking there are humans, our brothers and sisters, billions of kilometers from Earth. We cannot remain monoplanetary anymore. A cosmic event we still don't understand could wipe us all in a matter of seconds. And what legacy would humans have left? We'd be gone without a trace, with nothing to prove our existence. Humans are not designed for space. I agree with you on that. But we were not designed to be in the water. We were not designed to be in the air. But that's what humans are best at. Ingenuity and innovation. We explore, we build, we conquer, we repeat. That's what we were doing in 1017 AD. That's what we're doing in 2017. And that's exactly what we'll do in 3017. Let's get back to the fictional narrative because there's a certain way I want to end it. Let's just imagine in the third year, Resolve stops working 
and the team decides to harness water from a frozen lake they saw nearby. They drill a hole deep into the sea and take a sample. Before tasting it, obviously, they take it to the lab and see it under a microscope. The biologist looks into the microscope, writes something on a paper and walks away. On the paper is a four-letter word. And the rest is history. I mean, the rest is the future in your hands. Imagine that. Wouldn't that be just incredible? I really hope you like these videos. I had a lot of fun writing them, filming them, then editing them. If I do have time, I'll definitely do more things on this channel. So don't unsubscribe if you've already subscribed. Because I might just be posting soon. Thank you for watching. If you've just watched one episode or watched the entire series. Now that the series is done, is there any topics that you'd like me to cover? I've realized while editing that I've put a lot of content in these videos. And even though they're really long, they seem quite rushed. And I promise that my future videos will talk about fewer topics, explaining them properly in a shorter amount of time. But for now, this is goodbye from Voyage Beyond Earth.